As fuel prices all over the world continue to increase, how has this affected the demand and the rising industry of solar power? Here to talk to us about recent developments in solar energy and the impact of the, pan to, of the pandemic to the industry is Jochen Stotter, Managing Partner at Philogy German Solar. Magandang umaga, Joe. Magandang umaga. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah. So first off, how has the COVID-19 or uh, the new normal affected the solar industry? As has demand for the solar power increased or decreased? Have there been new developments amid the pandemic? Yes. Um, in fact, as hard as it was for us in our personal life, um, for the solar industry, it was quite positive. Why? Because a lot of mm -hmm. people had to stay at home, actually every one of us during the lockdown. So we had to use more aircon, we had to use our, we had to increase our consumption at home and electric bills skyrocketed. People even panicked. Um, the bills multiplied by t three times, four times. And of course, everyone um, had somehow an, an, an eye-opener about how dependent everyone is on electricity rates and, and the electricity prices. In fact, electricity rates and prices are the major cost burdens for house owners and, and business owners. So um, mm -hmm. what is the most logical thing to do is to, to think about how I can solve that. And uh, in the Philippines, we have a lot of, of course, free and natural sunlight, so free energy is everywhere on our roofs. And um, that's why the um, um, increase for solar um, massively uh, um, increased for us um, and we could help a lot of people to solve these issues and to to lessen the burden of electricity costs right so speaking of sunlight we know the philippines is a uh, tropical country but now that our summer season has passed how secure is solar power amid the rainy season summer yeah this is one of the major concerns actually at the moment of a lot of our clients or interested um, filipinos um, um, it depends always on the quality of the solar system you look at. So I speak about high quality solar systems that we offer, for example, now. Um, they are fully secure. They are typhoon proof, lightning proof, fire proof, and um, nothing basically can happen. Um, um, the, the, the mounting system from the solar system can sustain wind loads up to 300 kilometers per hour. So very secure. Mm -hmm. And what are the uh, other misconceptions about solar energy? Why would you say, what would you say are the pros and cons to this? And why would the pros outweigh the cons? Misconception, mostly what we hear is it doesn't work um, because mm -hmm. maybe someone made experience with um, very um, um, old technologies, maybe 10 years ago, where the technology was not yet as developed in the Philippines, in other countries it was, but maybe not in the Philippines. And um, that is actually not true. Um, solar is very reliable. You have warranties of up to 25 years. So it's an extremely secure, fully automatic performing technology that is proven all over the world. Um, in, in, for example, where I come from in Germany, we brought all that experience here to the Philippines. I mean, it's there for over 20, 25 years already. Mm -hmm. Nearly everyone has solar. Yeah, so in the Philippines, that is something um, um, we were always wondering about. Why, why um, is the technology not leveraged more? Because actually the Philippines is, is, is perfect for solar. We have so much sunlight. We are a famous right, uh, tropical right. country, most, uh, mm -hmm. most famous, most probably in the world for, for, for the beautiful nature and the, 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 the sunlight we have. So, um, and uh, as I said, Phil Philippines is heavily dependent on imported fossil fuels. Also, so what's the impact of the currently high oil prices on solar energy? Yes, that is a very good aspect. Um, in fact, um, it has a massive um, impact on us. Why? Because most of our electricity is produced using fossil fuels, um, mm -hmm. around 70 to 80 percent. And from these fossil fuels, there are several. Coal is the major electricity source that we use here to produce our electricity. So it's basically the dirtiest electricity source in the world. How do we get it? We don't have it here in the Philippines. We import it from other countries. So we are dependent on exchange rates, on prices from others. And of course, the fuel mm. costs, because it has to be shipped here. All these increases will, in the end, be forwarded to us as consumers. So electricity rates this year, in some areas, increased five times already. And we have mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia already the highest electricity rates in Asia. The sad mm -hmm. news is that in the future, it, can, it will never get cheaper here in the Philippines. We have a huge demand. Oh. It is increasing massively every year. We cannot keep up if we mm -hmm. continue investing in fossil fuels and non-renewable energies. The only solution is to invest in renewable energies, to use what we naturally have, sun, hydro, meaning water, wind, geothermal, the heat from the volcanoes, for example. 
But as a house owner or as a business owner, of course, you cannot just put a geothermal um, plant in your garden or you cannot put um, a big windmill in your garden. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. The most accessible technology for renewable energies and the cheapest and the easiest to install is solar. Mm. So this is the solution we have to go. We call it decentralized energy management. You produce the electricity right, right where you live, on your roof. Business mm. or houses can solve it and tackle these issues. So you get independent from these increasing electricity rates and from these high electricity rates. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe, since you've mentioned the increasing electricity rates, how can switching to solar help both residential and business owners? Yes, it, it instantly cuts your electricity bill. Mm. So instead of paying for let's say, quite dirty electricity because of the sources we have um, and, and, and being dependent on these increases in the electricity rates, um, you, you basically, uh, yeah, in the end, get independent from all of this, produce it, and you replace the electricity you would buy for free from, from green electricity from the sunlight. Mm -hmm. And what do you hope to see for the solar industry in the Philippines post-pandemic, both short-term and long-term? I would like to see a massive increase. At the moment, we account with solar electricity for around 3% of the Philippines' electricity demand. It is not too bad. Um, we've seen mm -hmm. very good developments, but it is not enough. It has to be much faster. It has to be pushed by the government. It has to be pushed by the decision makers or the ones that can influence the market, which are the architects, developers, construction companies. It has to be a standard to be integrated in the building design as well as it is a standard to put everywhere air comes to cool down the rooms because they are the major electricity consumers. Mm -hmm. And um, what I would like to see more is banks um, supporting financing for solar, the way they, for example, support financing of cars. Because um, nice. in the end, um, you have a secure investment with solar, much more secure than with a car. And you have a really nice return on investment because everything you invest in solar, you earn back in four to five years. So you have Agreed. to invest one. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and Joe, you're located in the Philippines, right? Where can yes. we contact you and where's your location for more uh, information on this, on solar energy? Our head, yeah, our headquarter of Philippi German Solar is um, right outside Eastwood City in Quezon mm -hmm. City. And you can contact us through our website or our um, contact numbers. Um, that you can also see when you just Google Philogy or Facebook and all the social media channels we are available. And happy to answer all questions and to consult for free. All right. Thank you for being on the show, Joe. Thank Mag you very much. Salamat. Maraming salamat.